Okay. Uh, so I am not a one size MPI fits all uh, guy. Uh, I think that there's a diversity of different kind of communication uh, methods that you want to use for different cases. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about something that's new that we're working on. Um, it's one of a few different efforts that I drive here uh, at NVIDIA. And I'm CJ Newbern, delighted to be with you here. Uh, oh, by the way, I'll make a plug uh, while I have the mic, um, so I'll forget later. Uh, we have had, for the last, I think, almost five years, a monthly forum uh, for anybody that's interested in containers and orchestration for our, an HPC context. Um, and so if you're not already, there are lots of people here that have been actively part of this, and uh, it's been supporting this effort in HBCW for a lot of years. Um, but if that's something that you're interested in, um, please let me or Christian or anybody else know, and we'll just add you to the invite. Um, we've It's a forum in which uh, we've used to try to uh, bring up and try to drive towards technical resolution for uh, a number of the problems of common concern to us. All right, so I'm going to talk about uh, a new programming model called SCADA for scaled accelerated data access. So uh, you've known for a long time that GPUs are these compute monsters where you have a huge amount of compute resources and you use those to just do crazy amounts of computation on each of like orders of hundreds of thousands of threads. So uh, the challenge is that some applications aren't that compute intensive, but they're really data intensive. And the problem is that they want to make a whole bunch of fine-grained data accesses. So if they were making uh, coarse-grained accesses, uh, then you might as well just get the, have the CPU coordinate, and you know it ahead of time from the CPU, you could have the CPU coordinate it for you and uh, just saturate your pin bandwidth, sort of bringing in the data. Um, but in this case, uh, you could use lots and lots of threads, each making this uh, small fine-grained access and sort of squirting the requests and the uh, uh, responses uh, through the GPU pins uh, the, uh, across the, uh, outside the GPU complex to, to out the outside. Um, so for a huge data set, you eventually can't do loads and stores because you just you can't fit everything in your local memory. And even though we're making GPUs that are the size of uh, you know racks, uh, you still can't necessarily fit your whole problem in there. And so especially if you're not that compute intensive, uh, it's kind of a, a waste of your money for you to go be buying a whole bunch of GPUs just for their HBM. That's kind of expensive. Uh, it's much more cost effective to uh, get a better a total cost of ownership um, by using cheap NVMEs, but the challenge is how do you go access that data that's now in storage uh, and be able to do that effectively from the GPU when every thread is making its own access. So as an example, you could think of uh, a tree and edge graph, which won't fit in one GPU by any stretch of the imagination, and uh, you're visiting nodes and the decision about uh, each thread is visiting a different node, and the decision about which node it's going to visit next is based on embedding data that it's got to read, uh, that, and it may need to get from storage, for example, uh, and make a decision to go to the next node. And so uh, that, again, gives you a huge volume where each of the threads is making its own decision. You can't choreograph that from the CPU anymore, uh, and you need to be able to make this work. Um, so what they're doing today, uh, you end up being very constrained uh, with a lot of complexity of trying to uh, bring in data uh, and try to not to run out of memory. Uh, so the OOM problem is uh, a real challenge for people, and you're also limited in the problem size that you can do. So um, uh, when you go to do, uh, when you run your credit card through something, um, I understand that they make 10,000 checks. Uh, for fraud uh, while you're sitting there waiting for that lot, you've been approved. So uh, that's actually what's going on uh, behind this. And they'd like to be able to do much better fraud detection by going back in history. So this is relevant for GNNs, it's re relevant for data analytics, vector searches, and uh, uh, retrieval augmented uh, 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 work uh, as well here. So uh, this is an architecture that we have for this. So we have a client on the client side, we have a header-only library. And so whatever your application is, uh, you and only you know what kind of object you want to work with. So why not have a cache that's made up of those objects? Well, you can use that with C++ templated programming. 
um, and <clears throat> so the apps objects are compiled into the cache. Um, and here you want to do data access because if you want to have an unbounded amount of data, you don't want to say, okay, so take all the data, read it in from storage and materialize it into this memory object, which I can now work on because that won't fit in memory. And you might not ever need to access all that data. You might be accessing only a small fraction, say if you're sampling parts of a graph. So we can actually uh, reach uh, a third of HBM or high bandwidth memory bandwidth on hits. Uh, and you can uh, get over 100 IOPS on an EA100 uh, for misses. The server has to be in a separate process that can be in the same uh, or a different GPU or node. And the client server communication happens with a secure domain socket. So you have captive NVMEs, and those are hidden from the OS, and I'll explain sort of uh, how that's handled and managed. And you can have different kinds of services here. So the first one that we're going after in this prototype here, this isn't a product yet, is with a swap store that does a spill and fill. So you bring your data into uh, the GPU, and instead of worrying about running out of memory, you just shove it into SCADA, and then you can read it back later uh, when you need it. <coughs> There's no persistence now, um, but we're looking to add persistence as we go forward and add other support like key value. Okay. So... <coughs> um, the architecture here, again, we have a client on a GPU. The server could also be in a GPU, but it's a different process. So the concern, security concern is that if you give something access to an NVMe, and NVMe has a DMA, a direct memory access engine in it, and you can use that to go scribble all over memory. Right? So that's kind of a security concern. So you can't give it direct access to that. So you need to have a separation. The server needs to be uh, more privileged in order to be able to do that. Um, so the architecture then is you have this privileged server instances are spun up uh, for each job, and then they publish a socket, and then the client connects to those prescribed sockets. Is that clear? All right. <coughs> so uh, the architecture in a data center might look like this. So you might take the different nodes that you have and say, well, some we want to use for SCADA, some not so much. The ones that we have for SCADA, we're going to take some of the NVMe drives uh, that are, for example, in the chassis, or we could use managed storage, whatever, and sequester them so that the OS can't even see them, uh, but they're available for use for this. And so uh, inside each of these nodes, uh, the uh, way that you can do this in a, a Kubernetes environment is you have a kubelet. A kubelet's actually the one with the privilege that's responsible for being able to access and govern access, uh, for example, to the NVMEs and the other other resources. And you can use a, a kubelet uh, public plugin uh, for the DRAs, a, a dynamic resource allocator. Uh, and uh, that'll basically interact then uh, with the server and the client. And I'll walk you through uh, sort of how this would work. So this hasn't been implemented, but this is sort of the design that we have in mind. So the admin, uh, at sort of uh, time minus one, does this manual sequestration of the drives, so it's invisible to the OS on a subset of the SCADA nodes. The Kubernetes at sort of time zero goes and deploys Kubernetes and creates a kubelet on all the nodes and uh, sets up a DRA driver that includes a kubelet plugin and all the SCADA nodes. So then the admin publishes the classes, like these sockets, uh, to the Kubernetes API server with a YAML file and says, you know, here's what's available, here's what you can access as available resources uh, so that those can be scheduled. Then the DRA driver publishes those class instances, these sockets, uh, to the Kubernetes API server. OK. All right, just got a couple more slides. So upon uh, job creation, these job requests uh, access uh, to the instances of the resource class as a resource claim. The Kubernetes scheduler basically picks available instances via the request of the API server, and no, which knows what the published list is, and then allocates those instances as claims. Um, the scheduler then schedules a pod on the node where it uh, allocated resources. The kubelet picks up that pod, calls out the DRA uh, uh, kubelet plugin, and prepares those resources. Uh, and the DRA kubelet does that preparation and, for example, uh, takes and ejects the container uh, into the container via the uh, uh, CDI, um, the uh, device interface. And then on job termination, the kubelet triggers, you know, does the sa standard Kubernetes stuff and triggers the call out to the DRA kubelet plugin to unprepare that resource, for example, to free an NVMe namespace. And the scheduler gets notified via watching the claim of the API servers and frees those instances. So um, 
just uh, we thought that this might be kind of something that we hadn't seen or thought of before. Uh, and so wanted to, uh, we're interested as we develop SCADA to hear more about your use cases for GPU initiated storage uh, or for this uh, fine grain accesses. Um, uh, this work with DRA is relatively new, um, but that's kind of the, the standard way that we're driving that uh, through uh, the, the broader community with this. So we invite you to embrace and extend that uh, standard Kubelet plugin architecture and create DRA drivers to suit usage models like those are described here and continue making good of uh, use of the container device interface. Um, this hasn't been done with Slurm, but we'd like to try that and compare and contrast that as well. All right. Any questions? Happy to answer. CJ, is that what's the interface for the applications? Is it still POSIX or is it something else? I'm trying to understand this. POSIX doesn't let you do that from the GPU. POSIX doesn't let you do anything like this from the GPU. Okay. So, and it's you're not accessing a file. I didn't. Uh, I was trying to keep it short, so I didn't uh, talk that much about it. But uh, we can provide, so you can use a, an interface like MDSpan, for example, for okay. this, to be able to just go if it's a, a continuous uh, array. And then the implementation behind that will say, yeah, I'll go get the, d they'll give you a reference to the data. Uh, I'm not going to materialize it for you, but I'll let you access it um, from uh, inside uh, Lambda function, for example. Okay. 